Hey Internet, my name is Julian, and I'm here with this week's Nerdy Brew News. To start off this episode, I'd like to give a little bit of news about us. Um, here at Nerdy Brew News, I actually want to start doing this program a little bit more often, so that way I can kind of shorten the videos a little bit, and also get you news a little bit quicker. Um, some of the news articles that I put out are a little bit behind, um, as well things develop pretty quickly, so I want to be able to develop uh, with that. Uh, that being said, I'll, I want to try and get these episodes out every Monday, Wednesday, Friday now instead of just once a week. Hence why this episode's coming out Wednesday and not last Friday. Um, so it's been a little bit over a week since my last episode. Um, for that being said, let's just start off uh, on the top of the hour with some follow-ups from last week. I'd like to talk about Destiny 2 a little bit and follow up from what I said about last week. Now last week I talked about the release date, the trailer, and also the different editions that are coming out for the game. And I asked the question, will PlayStation get exclusivity like they did for uh, Destiny 1? Now, my question was actually answered this week when Sony PlayStation's official YouTube site posted the trailer for Destiny. And now at the end of the trailer, it actually shows a little uh, additional image that says Destiny 2 uh, exclusive timed content running uh, at least till fall 2018. Uh, now what that means is most likely Destiny 2 content, any kind of DLC, will be coming out earlier on PlayStation platform compared to Xbox or PC, and there may even be additional content that those other platforms don't get. Now it does say till at least fall 2018, so you can guarantee that all that stuff will be coming out till 2018 for fall for PlayStation, but it doesn't mean it's going to stop there. Um, when they use the terms at least, that means eh, maybe it could run longer. So who knows? Uh, maybe by the end of 2018, we might even see the trailers for Destiny 3, so it might not even be uh, you know that much worth it anyway at that point. Um, so that's really up to follow-up for De uh, Destiny 2. I do have some follow-up news also for GameStop, so let's just jump right into that. GameStop is actually continuing their bad luck this week. Um, last week I discussed about how they have store closures due to underperforming sales. This week it is about security breaches. That's right, on their online store, GameStop.com, they actually mentioned that there's a possible security breach reaching from mid-September 2016 to the first week of February 2017. Um, what did the, I guess, hackers, you can call them, that got the information? Well, they got names, addresses, credit card information, expiration dates, and even that, uh, that three-digit security code on the back of your card, they got all of it. Um, it hasn't been confirmed specifically, but there are rumors that they are looking into a breach. So best luck is if you've purchased anything around that time from GameStop is to just keep checking your statements to see if there's any fraudulent charges. If there is, call your bank right away or your credit line and let them know about it. The sooner the better. Um, so what does this mean for GameStop? Uh, it's not looking great. You know, poor sales numbers, now a security breach. It's bad news, and I guess we'll just have to see if they can kind of pick it up from there and move forward. My question for this segment is, do you plan on getting PlayStation 4's copy of Destiny 2 because exclusive content? Is that what's going to make your decision, or are you going to stick with the platform that you originally decided to purchase it on? Let me know in the comments below. And we'll just jump right into movie news. We all know Dwayne The Rock Johnson as being a WWF slash WWE superstar and also a movie star in the re uh, last couple, probably last decade, actually. Uh, while with his full plate, he has plenty of movies coming out with Fate of the Furious coming out, actually, I believe this week, and a couple other movies underneath his belt. He's We've got some news, actually, on one of his bigger titles, um, one of the bigger projects that he's working on, and that's from DC's Universe, the Black Adam project that he's doing. Um, he's confirmed that Black Adam and Shazam will actually be two separate movies in the universe uh, before they eventually meet up in a future movie. So what does that mean for him? Well, it could be good news coming sooner than we expected, as he did state that we have a surprise for Black Adam coming up. I can't tell you what it is, but it's going to be it's going to be fucking awesome. And that's a quote from him specifically. Um, so he also has a bunch of other things on his plate, like the upcoming Jumanji movie that is starting to get reviews as well, and their, quote, killer comedy. So other than that, I haven't really seen much reviews about it, and there's 
a little bit of a worry coming from fans on whether the movie's going to be good. Uh, now, the Jumanji movie originally was based with, you know, Robin Williams based off an old board game where he gets sucked into it and years later he comes out and, you know, they have to end the game. Um, this time around it's going to be based off a video game and I'm assuming the premise still stays the same where a group of characters have to either escape the video game or somehow end the video game so that way they can return to their normal lives. There really isn't much about it other than it's supposed to be releasing pretty soon, so I guess we'll just have to see when the movie comes out and see how it is. On top of that, Dwayne The Rock Johnson also has a Rampage movie, which is based off the 1980s video game of the same title, and he actually just casted Jeffrey Dean Morgan, who was best known for being, uh, playing Negan in The Walking Dead. And finally, the other news from Dwayne The Rock Johnson, I know it's very rock-heavy today, um, he's also been cast in the Jungle Cruise movie that was just recently greenlit by Disney. So he's got a lot on his plate. On top of that, he also has a sequel to San Andreas, a couple more Fast and the Furious movies apparently, and a ton other on his plate. So he's a busy man with a busy schedule, and I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot more about him in the future. Um, he's done really well in a lot of roles previously, and I'm assuming these upcoming roles that he's going to be in, uh, he'll do fine as well. On to some sadder news. Uh, we recently lost a comedy legend with Don Rickles. So if you've never seen Don Rickles' uh, comedy or you've never heard of him, you may know his voice from Pixar's Toy Story. He played Mr. Potato Head in that movie, and he surely will be missed. Now, for Toy Story, they plan on doing a Toy Story 4, and apparently it's already in production, and the rumor is that he hasn't done any of those voice lines for it. So what does this mean for the character? We really don't know. We don't know if he's going to be written off or maybe... Some of the previous dialogue that he's done for older movies will be used to splice in to fill out his lines, or they might replace him overall. There's really no word yet on whether or not they're going to do that, and if animation's already done and they try to cut out the character, that means that the production is going to be delayed even further. So I guess we'll just have to see and wait to hear from Disney Pixar to see if there's any um, news about it or whether or not they're just going to keep going. And back to DC Universe with some more news. Josh Whedon, who is well known for his Marvel Universe Avengers movies, is apparently rumored to be interested in writing and directing a solo Batgirl film. Now, the Batgirl in question is fan favorite Barbara Gordon, who, if you don't know who that is, it is the daughter of Jim Gordon. You may know him as Commissioner Jim Gordon from the recent uh, Batman movies uh, over the last two decades. Um, now, fans are so enthused about this news that they've also started to cast their own uh, actress to play Barbara Gordon, and there's a ton of them out there. Now, this could be a saving grace for DC Universe, as Josh Whedon has done really well in the Marvel Universe, and could bring a bright side to the DC Universe, as the last couple movies have not really done well. Um, now, this is just a rumor, so there's no release date or actual actress or anything news-wise, but... With DC trying to grow their universe, it could definitely be potentially true that they want to start branching out and doing other characters other than Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Cyborg, and Flash, who's going to be in the Justice League. So what are your thoughts? Would you want to see a solo Batgirl film? Would it be weird to see a solo Batgirl film without her being introduced in the DC universe first? Um, leave your comments below. And in final movie news, Carrie Fisher's brother Todd Fisher and her daughter Billy Lord have given permission to Disney to use extra footage that was shot during The Last Jedi to be used in Episode 9 to portray General Leia. Uh, now, Carrie Fisher has recently passed away, if you did not know, and Disney has stated that she was supposed to, be able to play a big role in Episode 9, and after her passing, they said that there would be no uh, use of CGI to recreate her, uh, to use her in Episode 9. Uh, now, that being said, it's kind of exciting to hear that the family has given permission to Disney to use these extra scenes so that way we can get one last look at Princess Leia in Episode 9 and to end off this trilogy on a strong note. Now, whether or not she'll still play a big role is up to Disney and the screenwriters for this movie. Um, depends on how much, I guess, lines and, and scenes that she actually filmed extra for Last Jedi. I guess we'll really just have to see and wait for the movie to come out and see exactly how uh, Last Jedi will end off and how the next movie will start off and where it will lead. So my question to you is, how do you feel about Carrie Fisher being uh, in Episode 9 of Star Wars? Please leave your response in the comment section below. Now into TV news. On April 1st, fans of Rick and Morty 
probably got the greatest prank they could ever ask for. Episode 1 of Season 3 debuted on Adult Swim's uh, website from a link to a live stream that was titled April Fools. Now, fans have been asking ever since Season 2 when would we be able to see the full season, and there really still isn't a definite answer other than Summer 2017. So we'll still have to wait for a couple more months until we see it, and there's not really an exact date, but I'm assuming there'll be something in the future, in the near future. Um, now, during the episode, Rick was in search of an elusive sauce from McDonald's chicken nuggets called the Szechuan sauce, which debuted back in 1998 alongside with Disney's uh, Mulan movie. Um, now, fans have actually made a petition for McDonald's to bring back the sauce. Now, there really hasn't been any word from McDonald's yet, but they did tweet out dub dub, which is a play on Rick's catchphrase from the show uh, Wubba dub dub. So... Is it meaning we're going to get a sauce? Probably not, but we really won't know until the future. Now, maybe they'll get together with the creators, and during the first week of Season 3, maybe we'll get the sauce, and maybe it'll run through the whole season, but who knows until it actually comes out. Now, in the final news from Rick and Morty, there's apparently a new card game from Cryptozoic Entertainment uh, called Total Rick All, which is based on the episode of the same name. Now, in the episode, Rick and Morty have to find out who is real and who is imaginative as parasites have taken over and have started uh, putting false memories in everyone's head. Now, the game is actually based on the same concept where there's different characters throughout the game and it's team-based and you actually have to decide who's real and who is a parasite and kill off all the parasites, essentially. Now, I'll put a link in the description below for where you can actually find all this information for the game and where to purchase it at. And finally, in TV news, Invader Zim, the beloved cartoon show from Nickelodeon, is coming back. Well, sort of. Nickelodeon will be bringing back the universe of Invader Zim in the form of a TV movie. Now, this has been a current trend that Nickelodeon has been doing over the last couple months with the green lit of Rocco's Modern Life and Hey Arnold in TV movie forms as well. And they plan on doing the same with Invader Zim. Now, they did post a tr uh, kind of a sneak peek trailer, I guess you could say, of Invader Zim, where it just says, coming soonish. So, I guess we'll just have to wait and see uh, with more information on that. Now, are you a big Invader Zim fan? And if so, are you excited for this TV movie? Please leave your comments in the comment section below. Our final segment of today will be in video games. First up, the people who brought you your younger brother's favorite controller, Mad Cats, has filed bankruptcy and ceased operations. The company was founded in 1989 and closed its doors March 30th of this year. Now, there's still some stock left available on websites all over, so you're still able to buy some of the product, and I would buy it soon, especially if you're looking for a cheap controller, because eventually I'm sure people will start buying them up and trying to resell them as antiques. Uh, now, did you ever use Mad Cat's controllers? If so, tell me about your experience in the comment section below. We have some more news on the Xbox Project Scorpio. This past week, Xbox released more information and the specs on the new console that is apparently debuting in the fourth quarter of 2017, and they're listed as followed. The CPU will be an 8 customized x86 core processor running at 2.3 GHz. The GPU will be a 40 customized compute units running at 1172 MHz. The memory will be a 12 GB GGDR5 with a memory bandwidth of 326 GDPS. It'll also include a 1 TB disk drive, a 1 TB hard drive and a 4K UHD Blu-ray uh, Blu disk drive. We are to learn more about the Xbox Project Scorpio at this year's E3 as we don't even know what it looks like yet. So what does this mean for Xbox fans? Well, it's an overall more powerful console than what we have now, and apparently it's more powerful than even the PS4 Pro. It's supposed to run, uh, run smoother and faster, it's going to be have a greater output for graphics, and overall just a lot more powerful console itself. Will it be backwards compatible or anything like that? We really don't know until E3 when they release all the information then. Um, so what does this mean for our pockets? Well, it's probably safe to say that it's probably going to be priced higher than what the current terabyte uh, Xbox One S is priced at, which is three forty nine right now. So it's probably going to be in the four to four fifty range, or possibly even higher, because of how powerful this system is. Back when I started writing this episode, Overwatch's new content was actually leaked, and by the time I finished writing this episode, it was confirmed. 
Uprising will be a new game mode from Blizzard Entertainment for the game Overwatch, where you'll be a group of players going against computers in almost sort of a horde mode. It'll be a select group of characters that you can choose from, and you'll be going up against computerized units that are, are trying to bombard you in King's Row. Now, the story behind it is apparently Tracer's first mission, and within this story mode, you'll be able to access 100 new skins, avatars, emblems, um, you know, all those good features that you get from those loot boxes that everyone loves. Now, this is one of the many free uh, DLCs that Blizzard has offered for Overwatch. In the past, they've given free characters, free new game types, and even different seasonal things such as Christmas, Halloween, and even last year's Olympics. Um, now, I know I'm definitely excited to play these new things, and it's available right now through May 1st. So if you're a huge Overwatch fan, go jump in and start playing. Let me know how it is in the comments below. Finally, with the success of Star Wars Battlefront series, came the updated version in 2015 of Star Wars Battlefront. Now, with the success of that game is coming the Star Wars Battlefront 2, and its trailer recently leaked online ahead of schedule. Now, the trailer was actually scheduled to release during this weekend's Star Wars Celebration here in Orlando. Now, what, what did we get from the trailer itself? Well, it looks like they're adding a single-player uh, campaign mode to it where you play as an Empire soldier after the Battle of Endor, and it looks like there's going to be possibly new modes and new locations. Now, in the trailer, it does show Hoth, Starkiller Base, and a battle between Yoda and Darth Maul. Now, whether or not that that battle is going to happen in the Heroes type thing that they had in the uh, previous game in 2015, or if it's going to be a new arena style battle, is really up to them. And until we find out more information, we really don't know. Now, at the end of the trailer, there is a pre order exclusive that says pre order to get the Jedi, the last Jedi character pack which means we'll most likely be receiving an older style Luke, an updated Rey, an updated Kylo Ren, and possibly even Finn. We have yet to see any more information of this game come out, but assuming after this weekend with all the Star Wars news probably dropping, it's safe to say that probably by Monday we'll have more information on the game itself, exactly the release date and probably the price itself as well, and what the game is really going to entail. So look out for that news on Monday. Now that's it here for me at Nerdy Brew News. If you like this video, go ahead and give us a like. If you want to see more of these videos in the future, please go ahead and subscribe. And just go ahead and share with your friends and family to share the news. Now that's it from here, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.